Hey everybody, welcome to the Arizona Deliverance Center. Sorry we're running a couple minutes behind, but that's okay. Because uh, Holy Spirit's here with us. We were in a small sanctuary, worshiping God, inviting Him. Man, He showed up today. He's here. Okay, we're live. He's here with us, and we're excited for what He's going to do tonight. Because He's coming. You all came here with faith. That's why you got in your car and you drove down here. You're going to get delivered if your body's broken or hurting, you're going to be healed. We decree and declare it because we've been asking him and we're all believing for it and we're thanking him for doing it. YouTubers, we've been praying for you too. We're excited. Okay, my name's Pete. Welcome everybody. I got a couple announcements. Uh, we got the, the Zoom meeting. That's on Wednesday at 6. Man, that thing's rocking pretty good. You guys should check it out if you want to take a picture of that. It's on Wednesday at 6 p.m. You can uh, take a picture of that or get with me. I'll give you my number. I'll text you the link. It's easier. That's what I do with some people. You know, get on there and check that out. Get your midweek deliverance. Uh, Tony, next slide. And we have Julie's seminar, women's seminar. That's on the 20th at 12 p.m. Uh, be there at 11.30 a.m. for worship. That's May 20th. That thing's going to be rocking. The Holy Ghost is going to be moving in power. Sorry, man, it's for women only. But we want to encourage you to come. Holy Spirit's going to be moving in power. There's going to be healings. There's going to be deliverance and a powerful message with a special speaker coming from afar. So make sure you get there. YouTubers, you can watch it. It'll be uh, live streamed. And um, let me see. What else is going on? We got the boxes on the doors, the bookstore. Oh, yeah. And we got some scripture. Let me read this to you. And then we're going to pray, all right? All right. Um, so, in Deuteronomy 20, verse 2 through 4, dang, I should have cleaned my glasses. I can work through it. Um, it says this, So it shall be, when you are on the verge of battle, that the priest shall approach and speak to the people. And he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. And do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For your Lord, your God, is He who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. That's what's happening tonight. Right now, we are going into battle. Let's go to Father God. Let's fix our minds on the Father, the King of glory, the Father God. Father, we praise Your name today. We thank you for every person that got in their car and came down here to get delivered, to get healed. We thank you for healing their minds, Lord. We thank you, Holy Ghost power, for coming here. You're already here. You're with us. You're healing us. You're delivering us. We thank you, Father, so much for this battle tonight. We thank you for every victory that's going to happen. You are our victory. You are our healer. You are our deliverer. And we cling to you and we praise you. And we thank you for the spirit of deliverance to fall. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Testing. One, two, three. We're living in a dry and barren land. Phoenix, oh man. They let lawlessness abound. And they did it all in the name of trying to be kind to somebody. Letting them do fentanyl and dying on the street, getting all these bacterial infections is not being kind to anybody. That's the, I don't think you should treat dogs that way. I think you should, you should let them know you can't do drugs. You can't. Drug addicts have to steal. Hello. Once the government money runs out, you got to rob somebody. You got to lie to somebody. Hello. 20% of the people have done drugs in here. They know how it works. Oh. In order to have an orderly society, there's got to be God's eternal law implemented. And there's a law that none of us can bypass. It's a spiritual law of reaping and sowing. And it says, whatever a man sows, that's what he's going to reap. Right. 
Then he breaks it down. He says, hey, to be specific, if you sow into your spirit, you're going to reap life and life eternal. If you sow into your flesh, you're going to reap corruption. It's going to be corrupted. It's going to corrode. Drugs are vicious. Oh, do you know some things they're not telling you about everybody that's shooting everybody? Oh, it ain't mad white people. It's people that are on psych meds and weed. They're... A third of the, all the schizophrenia cases are chronic weed smokers. Oh, no, you know, God gave us every tree bearing herb for our meat. You ain't eating the, the seeds for meat, son. You're smoking it, and you're getting high, and you're going into the spirit world, and you're not going in through the gate, which is Jesus Christ. You're going in another way, and you are a thief and a robber, and you meet demons. You meet demons like Joe Rogan meets the demons when he does DMT, and he goes, I can't figure it out. It's all these elves like jesters, and they keep giving me the finger. Oh, hello, that's a red, sign. That's a red flag. They're going to kill you when they're done with you. They're telling you what they're going to do to you. Oh, but see, I'll just pray, and then I'll fast, and then I'll go to a church, and I'll get the good foot for Jesus, and he'll just wash it. No, you reap what you sow. You know how many, I've been in jail ministry for 20 years. You know how many ministers I saw in there? I saw the minister that was running my ministry in there. How about them apples? The biggest jail ministry in the Southwest. And he had a place for the devil, and the place was only watching porn one time a year, sometimes two. Devil got in his head so strong that he told on himself, and he brought the evidence to the police station. And the detective said, hey, man, I've never seen anyone like you. I said, I think you learned your lesson. I don't think you're a threat to society. This has never been done. I've been a detective for X amount of years. But the prosecutor's in charge, and i got to put it on his desk, and he has 16 months to, try to charge you. And so he's praising, and his ministry takes off, and he's got a worship ministry, and he's got a jail ministry. And it's excelling. Because he's pressing in because he doesn't want the charges, and the charges come two days before they would have expired. He gets locked up. What happens when you get locked up as a sex offender? Everybody drops you like a rock. Then what happens? The spirit of fence is starting to work in him. But I, I tell him, I said, hey, there's another chance. There's another round. There's all these men. You can help them. You can still be a disciple. You can still win souls. You can still get people up on their feet out of these miry pits of deception. You were in the right place at the right time. You got to go through deliverance now. He finally believed me, went through some deliverance. He gets out and he found a church. Some other preachers were coming in there and he said, hey, can I come to your church when I get out? They said, yeah, we'd love to have you. And a lot of the, the, a lot of the jail preachers aren't so savvy. I didn't know there were sex offenders at first. I just said, man, why is this dude looking at my midsection, focusing on my lower region? And I would hide behind the pulpit. I said, what's wrong with this dude? And then the guy said, can we come to your church? I said, love to have you. Thought they were an odd group of guys. And they said, that's great because most churches won't take us. We're sex offenders. Some of the jail preachers don't even know what pods they're going into. So these particular preachers said he could come when he was released. He begins to go to the church. He said, I like this church so much. Not only do I want to go here, I want to be a member. See if I can be a member. They came back with the report. Not only can you not be a member, but we don't want you to come here anymore. We want you to leave. He takes an offense. Then I'm telling him, I'm meeting him at Starbucks. I shouldn't have been meeting him at Spar Starbucks. That's before I knew that stuff was toxic garbage made by Bill Gates' father and they're doing something. And I wouldn't want to be trying what they're doing with that stuff. That's just my own personal information for you. Whenever you put a demon on your logo, uh, I would take them for their face value, that something's demonic with it. And uh, I meet him there, and, and I said, hey, are you continuing with your deliverance? I mean, this stuff comes out in layers. When you're catching a snake, what do you normally do? You catch the tail of a snake. To get rid of a snake, you've got to catch him in the head. You've got you to get a hold of that head. You've got to take the head out. So when you start deliverance, normally you're working with the manifestations. You're trying to get rid of porn and drugs and depression, bad relationships, financial distress, hopelessness. Your, your ministry gifts are just completely dormant. You can't do what you used to do. You don't find pleasure in doing what you used to do. So you realize you've got some need for deliverance but you're just catching the base, the tail of the enemy. You even catch a certain serpent like a, like a lizard, he'll drop his tail. He moved on ahead. You got the tail, but, man, he's gone now. He's, he's moved ahead. You got to come find him now. 
And the Holy Ghost will turn the light, but it's a process. So I simply ask, are you continuing on? And he gets offended. And in the parking lot, he goes, you think I still got demons? And I said, bro, it's a process. We all got to keep going, man. There's layers to this. And I uh, took an offense. I never heard from him again. He had some hopes. He, 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 was, he looked the part. He was a 25-year military veteran. He was a, he was a Marine. So, man, he, he had that nice back at 60, you know, like he does his push-ups every morning. And, and when he would come into the jail and he would dress nice, all these mothers and family members would come right to him and say, please, can you pray? I got a nephew in here. I got a son in here. I got a brother in here. Can you pray for us? We're, 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 we're distraught right now. We're confused. We can't. These charges, are, they're, they're asking for 20 years for the settlement. And he would pray for him. And he said, you know what? They never said I couldn't come in the lobby. And minister, I, can st I never saw him in there ever, once. He told me that's what he was going to do. Just minister to all the families that are in the waiting room trying to get on and never saw it. So I want to I read something to you that I wrote. And I wrote this after going to a church that was really disheartening. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of give you some feelings of what's going on in your church. I hate to break these re reading glasses out, but it's my first time. 23 years of ministry. Bam! Got to get over my insecurities. This is small print. And uh, so I come out of this church. I write this thing. I said, the more the carnal local church is, the less the spirit world is preached. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The Bible says, the natural man receives not the things from the spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know him because they're spiritually discerned. 1 Corinthians 2.14, he says, then the primary way to block a believer from the moving of the Holy Spirit is to keep him in the natural realm. He does this by nullifying the word of God, by passing down the traditions of man, and it makes the word of God of no effect. Jesus was rebuking the, G the Jews for doing the same thing in Mark chapter 7. He's telling you right there, when you start walking in your flesh, the only thing you can do is play some songs for him. The only thing you can do is get a mic master that can work that thing. All you can do is entertain them because they're, they're, they're wrapped up in their flesh. So that's why you got to sing send so, send songs. That's why you got to put tight pants on the men who sing. That's why you got to have smoke coming up to entertain them. And he knows what he's doing. And he says in Mark chapter 16, he says, These signs follow them who believe. You ought to see this in your church every week. In my name, they will cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents and they'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. These are the signs of every born again believer. Yet we see little to none of this in the church. And it tends to be more of just trust him even though you're going through a struggle. Hold on. Things are going to get better. Or they went over to the complete other side where they're a self-help group with positive thinking as the primary message. But the Bible declares the Lord is a man of war. And Paul tells Timothy to war a good warfare and to fight a good fight of faith. Watch this one. In Galatians, Paul says to the church of Galatia, who bewitched you? There was a witchcraft curse in the church. You think there ain't witchcraft churches in the... The demons go to the churches. That the, everyone's wrapped up like aluminum foil at the nightclub. He, that thing's running on its own. He's got you some hip-hop beats with some demons. Got you smoked up, drunk up. Got people watching porn. That thing runs to perfection. You're already coming there with your demons. That's a celebration of demons to do what they trained you to do. He comes to the church. There, Elamias, he was in the church with the Jews. They were, he was up in there. These Jews had become a bunch of brood of vipers. He infiltrated the leadership. Oh, no, now we're Christians. He just leaves. Are you kidding me? Have you seen the Christian church? Jet-flying Christians, Gucci-wearing, Ferrari-driving Christian so-called celebrity pastors, quick-witted oratorial skill masters, bringing glory to themselves, living an opulent lifestyle while the whole world's perishing. Jesus himself said, no servant's above his master. It's enough he's like his master. If they hated me, they'll hate you. Jesus didn't come to be served, but to serve and to lay down his life as a ransom. So then, uh-oh, watch this. The Galatians, he says, who bewitched you? You're believing lies, and you're in danger of falling to another spirit, to another Jesus, having another gospel than which was preached. And in the New Testament, witchcraft curses, 
There's also fake Holy Spirits, fake Jesuses, completely different Gospels. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, 1, it says, Now the Spirit expressly says in the latter times some will depart from the faith. They will give heed, they will listen, they will obey. To what? Deceiving spirits and the doctrines of demons. In verse 2, he tells you how they're going to do it. He's going to do it with the deceiving spirits. He's going to do it with the demons. And they're going to do it through what? Lies hypocrisy, and the shearing of one's conscience. Can you believe they got people up here that are sodomites? You just go into town on some backside of some dude, and you're up here preaching. That is the most craziest. Your conscience has been so seared, you don't hear from God, and God don't hear from you, period. Will he have mercy on you? Will he save your soul? He's a merciful and a faithful high priest. He's coming for everybody. He desires no one to perish. But the Bible says this, not many of you assume to be preachers because I'm going to judge you more strictly. Why would he judge us more strictly? Because we're accountable for much. Much has been given. A platform to speak to a bunch of people is an accountability. And you need to be able to preach the whole counsel of God. You need to be faithful to teach people that, yeah, Jesus said, hey, repent. The kingdom of God is now. The, John the Baptist, the greatest prophet that ever lived, said, repent for the kingdom of God is coming. And Jesus said, it's here. Without repentance, the Bible says there is no gospel. And what they do, they took away the key essential part of the gospel. And so what do you have? You have blind leaders leading people who are blind themselves. And in the end, they say they both fall into a pit. What's the pit? It says they're going to hell. The hell is the pit. Hell is the pit. So continuing on, it says this. He's going to do it with deceiving spirits and demons. And they're going to do it through lies, hypocrisy, and shearing people's conscience. We can see this being run to perfection in the church. Sunday, I went to a local church, and the preacher was talking about Mary and the virgin birth. And he said that Jesus wasn't just born when he was conceived out of his mother. He said he was at the beginning of time. I said, oh, no, 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 that's another Jesus. Jesus is outside of time and space. Jesus created time and space. He was the lamb slain before the foundation of the earth. He's from everlasting to everlasting. He alone is God. My Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until they make your enemies your footstool. He's not subjected to time and space. He creates it. Then he comes down from his seat of heaven and he robes himself in humanity to take our place, to live the life we were to live and die the death we deserve. He starts teaching another Jesus. And then he talks about all these struggles that we're having. He doesn't, you know, if prayers aren't getting answered, don't get mad at God. Maybe this is why that happened, or maybe this is why that happened. The Bible says, if you pray and you don't believe, I'm not answering your prayer. You're a double-minded man, unstable in all your ways. You shouldn't think you're getting anything from God. You're supposed to have faith. It's the only thing that pleases God. It's the only thing that opens up the doors of the miraculous. You can get mercy because he's a merciful and faithful God. But when you want to get something and get an answer and you've had some seasons with the Lord, you got to have faith. Then it says if you're quarreling with your wife, Satan can chop your prayers down. He said, well, don't be mad at God. Are you kidding me? If you're mad at God, God has done nothing wrong. He is good all the time, always looking to help you. But he gave you his word so that you would know how to be in the position to get the miracle. These are all positions. You can be a blind buyer to Maus son of Timaeus, and you can drop your identity as someone that's going to get all his bills paid because you got a blind man's coat, you're a Jew in good standing, and you're worthy of alms. But when you want to get healed from your blindness, you drop that identity, and Jesus gives somebody a new identity. He changed Abraham's name, Abram to Abraham. He changes Peter's name. He's into a new name. But everybody else has got their same name and their same walk and their same desires and their same hopes and dreams. What does that tell you? They didn't get the Holy Ghost. And he gives this fumbling around. He even has a doctor before his name. And then he says, oh, the, the altars are going to be open, and he wants everyone to like him. And then he goes, hey, I might make some people mad. There's people hurting. I've seen women crying. So these type of churches are so ineffective that what it does is it sounds good enough to a lukewarm Christian. He doesn't know he's being slow cooked in the hot water by Satan. So it sounds good enough that he stays in his little dream state. It's enough to keep the goats happy because you were enough worldly entertainment and jokes. And then it's not enough Holy Ghost to help the broken. And now for that, you're going to be responsible. You need to give somebody an opportunity after you preach to come and receive what God said he would do. 
Paul said, I didn't come with eloquence. I didn't come with the splendor. I didn't come with persuasive speech. I did this intentionally that your hope wouldn't rest in the wisdom of man, but rather in the power of God. Then it says God backed him up with signs, wonders, and miracles every single time that he preached. That's how it's supposed to be done. Paul is the greatest Christian that ever walked the planet. No, nobody would argue with it. I mean, he had this thing. He had revelation. No one had that revelation. He, they were praying in tongues too much in church. He broke it down how he needed to do it orderly. One, two, three at the most. There must be an interpreter. You remain silent. You pray by yourself. He said, I pray in tongues more than all of you. He had been beaten with rods. He had been stoned to death. He had been shipwrecked numerous times. He was in danger of wild beasts, danger of the Jews, danger of the Gentiles. He was falsely imprisoned. He had an angel of Satan, a messenger of Satan to buffet him so that he wouldn't be exalted above measure. There, it seems to me like there's a cost to be a powerful Christian that you just can't take off running with a gift and a little bit of dance move and some song. That, that ain't going to work in the spirit world. That'll work to entertaining people, but that's not going to work in the spirit world. I, I'm not in this Bible. I hope you read it. I hope you read it every day. It's essential. Then the guy goes, hey, this might make people mad. Hey, the sun's lost. And they kind of, oh, he goes, and I'm going to say something that might make you mad. Go Lakers! And it was kind of mostly booze. And everyone filed out. That's how you run an altar call? That's how you tell people that the altars are open? Don't be like that. You, you be somebody that hits those streets and, and, and th you know your word. I'm, I'm, out, I'm on the word. My introduction to somebody that on, uh, I can't remember what day it was. And this is my opening before I led him to Jesus. I said, hey, do you want to die? No. Flies were all over this guy, 30 years old. The flies aren't coming on me, they're on him. I said, you have a spirit of death on you. And I began to go through the gospel. I don't assume people know the gospel. Everybody's got a part of the gospel. I got to take you through the curse. The curse came through one man, Adam. Therefore, the curse reigned in all men. Salvation comes into the world through one man, Jesus Christ. And that's according to your own free will. You have to receive him. You have to follow him. You have to ask him. It's a relationship. Long story short, the guy got saved had some prophecy for him. It was a divine appointment. The other guy, I'm talking, I'm small talking, and I, I'm kind of chopping it up, and he's working for Big Pharma. He's trying to push it, so I'm saying, hey, you know who you're working for, right? You're working for, the, you're working for the top dog now. You're not running with the little fish no more. You know what you're doing? And uh, yeah, yeah, and I take this stuff too, and pretty soon I said, okay, we talked for a while, so are you raised in the church? You born again or are you just raised in the church? He said, well, that's weird you say that. Now, I went to a Christian college for four years. I was Baptist, but I consider myself more spiritual now. I said, well, what does that mean? He says, well, when I go to the mountains, I feel God. And, and when I see the birds of the air, I connect, man. I unwind. I feel God. I said, oh, man, you know, that's close to, that's how people became homosexuals. He, what? I said, they started worshiping the creature and the creation rather than the creator. And later on, God gave them over to a debased mind to do what they ought not to do. And men began to lie with a man as a man is to lie with a woman. A woman lied with a woman as a woman is to lie with a man. I said, there's only one way to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. Everyone else is a thief and a robber. Jesus did it all for you unless you come through the blood that was shed He's merciful, and he won't leave you as an orphan. He'll come to you, and he'll give you power to be who he called you to be. He'll begin to work this power through you. And he goes, man, that's funny. I was drunk in Vegas, and a guy said almost everything you're saying. I said, okay. God said, confirm every word out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. If you need one more to make sure it's God before you change your life, then go ahead and ask him. But I suggest you go ahead and do it now. This is, this is, you, you got to go and hit those streets. You know, Jesus loved me. Well, we love Jesus too. Everybody loves Jesus. We got all kinds of news anchors that are fans with Jesus. We got comedians that are friends of Jesus. They praise him on one side of their face. They blaspheme his name out the other side. Uh, fans of Jesus cannot help you. They cannot help you. You will never learn from a fan of Jesus anything other than what not to do. We need to be able to follow those who are following Jesus. Paul said, follow me, emulate me as I emulate Christ. Go ahead, I'll show you how this thing's done. Get up close and watch me.
That was a bold statement Paul made. Well, what does it mean? We got, we got to train people. It says, go into the world and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I commanded. You, you just, oh, I'm saved by grace, and I'm just going to wallow in grace and keep drinking and watching porn. I got side chicks. I got 50 lovers under my belt. I got one STD, took care of that down at the clinic. I'm just, God's mercy keeps coming through. Two bankruptcies. Dude, hello. The Bible says no sexual immoral will inherit the kingdom of God. Now, when he says these things, sodomites and sexual immoral and the murderers, I've seen many murderers repent and give their life to Jesus. Many. Literally oh, two dozen murderers. And I've seen Jesus fall on them. I've seen many people, child molesters, satanic people who sold their soul to Satan so they could molest little kids. I've seen them get saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. So God truly wants everyone to come. But when you come, you can't come at your own level. You can't come on your own terms. you got to come as you are. And you got to put yourself in a place of trust where he can shape and mold you, where he can have his full way, making you into the person he wants you to be. And that, oh, hey, I'm not telling you I didn't resist it. I wanted to stay being an evangelist. Evangelists, everyone pats you on the back. When you lead someone to Jesus and you see him anywhere, they got a smile on their face. But when you're working with deliverance and they don't complete it, they duck you out. Sometimes when they do complete it, they just know, hey, man, he knows all that stuff and I'd rather not see his face. It is what it is. It's a hard life. It's a hard ministry. Why? Because it was a ministry that was never supposed to be suspicious. This wasn't supposed to be called Arizona Deliverance Center. That was supposed to just be a sign of a believer. That was supposed to be done in every single church. That was supposed to be done when you were a little kid. You get them done when you're a little kid and your kids aren't chronic masturbators and watching porn and they're not getting high and they're not trying to do everything with every girl they run across and having a boy to make them feel like they're special or comparing themselves with all these other girls. Because the spirits come out. Oh, you'd be amazed at how many spirits come in through Disney and through Hannah Montana. I cast them out of my daughter at five. The spirit world is active, and the spirit world is strategic, and the spirit world shoots with precision to penetrate minds, and he doesn't play fair. That's why everyone's trying to catch the tail when you're 30, 40, 50 years old of the enemy. He got his head up in there. When you were a kid, when you were rejected, and when you had fear, and you didn't know for sure Jesus was real, and you didn't understand how to pray, and you didn't know how to press on, and you didn't know how to find comfort in the Holy Spirit, and took advantage of it, and he weaseled himself in there. He got in there, and he burrowed down so that he could steal, kill, and destroy, so that if you became a Christian, he'd still be operating in your mind through rejections. He'd still be operating through your body with strange cravings to get high. Getting high is a strange phenomenon. I used to spend, in Nebraska, there was times in the, in the 80s, weed would dry up. There wasn't cartel members. They hadn't ran America yet. And there was times where the teenage guy couldn't run across any. And boy, we'd do everything to find weed. We'd drive. We wouldn't go to school. We'd leave school. We'd take risk. And why? Because the drug spirit was calling our name. The drug spirit was telling us that there is comfort. There is peace for you in this place. We can make a, a, a bad day a good day. We can make a boring time a happy time. We can make an unknown time certain. Oh, those drugs have a voice. Hey, Tony, is there any way to turn that AC on? Or, or, or Pete, right there? Crank it. The devil wants to hide in your life. He doesn't want you, he doesn't want you to know he's there. I was preaching for 10 years. If you would have told me I had demonic spirits, I would have said, you're nuts. I would have said, dude, I've led thousands of people. to." I would have started comparing myself. You think I got demons? I've led thousands of people to Jesus. I got certified disciples walking the street, bearing fruit, leading other people. you telling me I got demons? I would have been offended. And I, I would have said, hey, I'm, I am prospering. I, I work part-time and make $400,000 a year. God's favor is on me. I give and it's been given to me, pressed down with good measure. My, all my guys, my, my main guys were TV preachers. And I kept in good standing with them to make sure I was on the prayer list by tithes and offerings. And I lived a life that seemed like that thing was legit. I was prospering. Every, God would do miracles. But the reality is, because I didn't know the word of God and I overlooked all kinds of scriptures, I didn't understand that the Holy Spirit, when Jesus was filled, led him in the wilderness to be tested. 
The Spirit led him. He didn't just go out there for a fast to get closer to the Father. It said the Spirit of God led him out there so the devil could tempt him and hammer him for 40 days and 40 nights. So that when he came out, passing the test, he had power and authority. You go around messing with demons, the seven sons of Sceva, they said, I don't know who you are. I don't recognize you. I know Paul and I know Jesus, but who are you? And they beat him down so naked. And then it says, not only did they receive a physical beating, but then it says they were heavy laden with fear. The devil left them with a beat down on the outside and fear demons on the inside. So you need to have knowledge. The first knowledge you have to understand is the knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The glorious good news is that we are saved by grace. Grace is unmerited favor. And you're saved by this grace and your faith in his grace and his finished work on the cross where he became sin who knew no sin, taking the place of you. And he shed his blood so your sins could be washed in the sea of forgetfulness. Well, those are sins you repent of. Repenting is not just, I'm sorry. Repenting is now, I used to run with the world. I used to want what the world had to offer. I longed for the world and the things I could accumulate and the things I could do to make me happy and the places I could visit. Now I'm going to follow God's word, which is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path, and he's going to show me. And what he shows you is what's really in you. There's a day where you get the hello wake-up call that you ain't the sliced bread for Jesus. You are a sinner, and you got to be shaped, and you got to be molded, and you got to, you got to get into his hands, and he's got to take things out of you. He can't work with those things. Those things are offensive to him. That's why deliverance is the children's bread. Deliverance isn't for the witches and the warlocks. They go around and, and voodoo high priests, they'll do ceremonies. You got a demon that's got you drooling and you can't go to work. Well, he'll do some kind of ceremony and that spirit will swap. But the one that's coming is probably going to give you a heart attack at 40 and kill you. He can't eradicate a spirit from you. He can only work in the spirit world with exchanging spirits. They'll move around. You had kidney disease. Next thing you know, you got heart failure. You got brain cancer 10 years later. You don't know where it came from because they cannot deliver you. They don't have access. They're demonic spirits, and demonic spirits do have power. There's only two sources of power, God's power and Satan's power. Any other power outside the power of the Holy Spirit falls under Satan power. Two categories. Now, you understand the gospel, then you got to understand the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit isn't your leading and guiding you and comfort you and teaching you and working in you, then what you do is you stay a stagnant Christian. Lukewarm Christians never grow. They, they can go to a seminar and bloop, God's there. People prayed and they worshiped and they planned and you fall into that environment because you bought a $59 ticket for the two-day event and you come into the presence of God, he'll touch you. He loves you. He wants to know you to know he's there. But then most people don't understand you got to unwind the devil now. He's lied to you. He's deceived you. He's manipulated you. He's got you to see things in a negative way. He's got you to see things that are biblical, but you can't have them. He's warped your mind. He's a masterful deceiver. A deceiver isn't just doing a card trick like three card money or the three, three nutshells and little peanut or whatever. He's not doing just an eye trick. He's masterfully deceiving you, webbing his ways into your mind, into your emotions. He's trying to put it in your soul so that when you start getting out of bondage, you just want to get rid of, rid of that manifestation that you're having at this current time, depression mostly, anxieties, fears, racing thoughts, some demon putting their hands on your neck, seeing shadow figures moving around your house. Oh, people always come for those things, and I'm glad they come because we can teach them more that, hey, there's a lot more going on. And you gotta, you got to take him all the way out, and to take him all the way out is a cost. And you have to be tested. And you've you, you got to be faithful. And many people take the bait of the enemy. And the devil begins to, he'll give you the world to forfeit your soul. I saw an evangelist come through here, and he was tested. And he lost a job that he was literally making 7000 a month. This is 14 years ago, so that'd be easily 10000 a month in today's money. And he, he got an injury in his body, and he couldn't work, and he lost his accounts. And next thing you know, this girl was coming over to get him that had a, a physique that's 
very rare and mostly adored by young men. And I said, oh, I don't know about getting together with her, my friend. I don't think that's the type of person that can help you in this stage of your life being tested. And he goes, well, man, what am I supposed to do? I got no place to stay. What am I supposed to do? I don't have any money. She takes me to dinner. I said, dude, you're playing with fire. I said, that girl is pretty. That girl is an attractive person. She's a kind person. But God is not going to send you a wife at this stage of your testing. You are being whittled down. You have been doing all these sinful things. Your car has been, re your vehicle has been repossessed. All these things. You're going through a test. God's not rewarding you with passing the test in the middle of the test. And he wouldn't listen to me. They left this ministry and they did a sham wedding with some $20 rings they bought from Walmart and ran their own service. That lasted one month before someone tried to kill him with a baseball bat bashing his skull in. <laughs> you want to play with the devil and you want to play with sin, you're going to reap what you sow, and I don't encourage you to do that. I would do what the Bible tells you to do. I would stay under the shadow of the Almighty. I would stay under his wing of protection. I, I would get, gather around me a cloud of great witnesses that would hold me accountable, that would give me good advice. I would gather as many people get in the habit of not gathering. I'd gather together as the believers. And I'd learn to have a heart of worship and trust. And I'd learn to have some spiritual discernment as I whittle these spirits down. Ah, that devil will lay something up for you that you can't believe. The, the devil gave me a multi-million dollar business. I thought I was coming up with my own, but I kept getting some red flags because some people were going to, they were going to be, they weren't going to be as good afterwards. It was going to wear them down. And this thing was coming together, and pieces were coming together. But one day, the devil had to show that it was from him. And it was in the middle of the recession, right before I went through deliverance. And I was going to the gym to hit the punching bag, and you can't hit it without some boxing gloves. And so I couldn't find this other glove. And I looked everywhere through my car like a champ. I mean, I'm looking for this thing. There's no way. This, this glove's this big. It's a triple extra large glove. I can't find it. I go into the gym. I just get a little weight workout, and I come back, and that glove is on the back seat on the top of the seat. I said, man, I ain't messing with this business, man. This is a devil telling me I'm putting this thing together for you. I mean, I found a venue to hold this thing. We didn't have a liquor license, but there was a bar right next to it that could have got a patio exemption. He was putting it all together to make this money, but it was from the devil. He will give you the world for you to forfeit your soul, and most people can't say no. Why? Because the flesh cries out to be served. Paul said, I learned how to deal with this flesh. I beat it down. I'm not air boxing, punching air. I'm beating my body down. I bring it into subjection. This body would obey me. It would do what I tell it to do. I, 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 don't, I don't let it. I don't let hoochie mamas at the gym. My, my son goes to football, plays football in Tennessee. He brought one of his buddies who was born and raised in southern Georgia. And they were going to the L.A. Fitness. And he's, the guy from Georgia goes, I can't believe these Arizona women go to the gym like this. What is this? This is crazy. And I'm like, oh, they've been doing this for about 15 years. I, 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 it's, it's just the way it is now. A look at me. Look what I got. Look what I'm working, working for. My value is you appreciating me. My value is in me shunning you off when you're not on my level. My value is I'm going to get everything I want. Oh, it's a, the devil is running this city to perfection. Everybody's carnal. Everybody drops in this city. It's called a transient city, Phoenix. The average person is only here four years and he packs up and leaves. That's why he's got no ties and he's got no obligations and he's got no roots here. And people will do some things where they have no roots and they have no family that they wouldn't do back home. Why do you think they put all the strip clubs by the airports? So when people have layovers, they got somewhere to go where they think they can dip in and dip out and there'll be no repercussions and no exposure of what they've been doing. So Jesus had a way and he shows you. We don't, he doesn't live in buildings made by the hands of men anymore. It says he lives in us, living stones. But he shows us when he went into the temple and he drove out the corruption that he had zeal for his house. That was his house. That's where the kabod came down. That's where the Ark of the Covenant was. That's where the, the offerings for sin was made for the people. Once a year, that was his place. That's where he dwelt. And what was in there? It was corruption. 
They had came in there and they had corrupted that place. They made it a, a den of thieves. What were they? They were thieving with money, merchandise, livestock exchange, currency change. And he came in and he rebuked them and said, you made my father's house a house of merchandise. What does that tell you? When he wants to infiltrate a Christian, what does he do? He does it with commerce. He does it with business. Do you know who... You go over to rich people, why does it say? What does it tell you? It says it's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Why? He says, why? the guy's got everything he needs. Have you ever met rich people? I've worked with them that got 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollars. What do they do? They get stressed, they get a massage. They get stressed, they go detox with some place that injects them with IV drip uh, uh, vitamins. They take a vacation, they go see the seven seas. They go have food catered in for a week. They take it easy. They have someone work for them. They kick their feet up. So they don't have the stress of having to work by the sweat of your brow so that you can pay the bills. They, they have this lap of luxury so, so they don't have to look for God like an average man. Why do you think all the miracles happen in the third world? Because they don't got Obamacare in the third world. They don't got access in the third world. You can't get on that hospital practice. They got armed guards with AK-47s that say you leave your sick body at the footsteps of this hospital. You don't come in here without money. And so they need God, and they have a desperation for God. And when you have a desperation for God, God shows up in desperate situations with miracles because he's the miracle-working God if you'll ask for a miracle. But if you can get an answer at the Mayo Clinic, you ain't going to pray a prayer of faith, and you ain't going to get down on your knees and cry out to God for a miracle. And when you can just go to a counselor, and you can just go to a therapist to tell you everything you need to focus on. I got a buddy who lost his mind. And it took him from being broke. He was coming here, but we couldn't get any spirits out of him because he wouldn't stop fornicating and smoking marijuana. And the, he goes, I want Jesus. He would say it. I want him. And, and the spirit wouldn't touch him. Why? Because he wouldn't set himself apart. He wouldn't live a life of sacrifice. He wouldn't shun evil. He wouldn't look to God as a holy God. He looked at God like, hey, I just want you to bless me as I am, and I want to keep doing what I'm going to do. And God doesn't do that. He does not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not a respecter of persons. If one man had to get a miracle by setting himself apart and fasting and praying, crying out because the taskmasters were too hard, then that's the way you got to get the miracle. And he wouldn't do it. So he was living in the worst neighborhood. He went from playing for the Cardinals to living on 24th Street in Van Buren. If you're from Phoenix, 24th Street in Van Buren was a high probability of you dying in the 80s and early 90s walking around there at night. It was the worst hood of the hood. But what he started doing was playing all these self-help CD, CDs. You need to think positive. You always need to have five rebuttals before you make the sales call. You know there's going to be five primary objections from anyone who doesn't want to purchase at that time. You must go before the person in whom you're trying to sell your product, and you must already have their answer. I mean, it's, I said, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing Listen to this? I said, this is my, think positive. When you rise up, think positive. Think about the good things in life. Think about the birds of the air and how they're happy and sing, whether they're in a good situation and a fortified nest and a birdhouse, or if they're in the slums, they are happy because they're not limited to the, I said, dude, this is some kind of crazy mind control. You got to turn this thing off. Who is this person? What is this? What spirits behind this thing? Oh, man, this is helping me, man. I get up. I couldn't make any phone calls. I, I couldn't make any calls. I'd cold call for like an hour or two, and I'd burn out, man. I'd get discouraged. These things help me. I'm able to knock out hour upon hour. He rose up with this garbage to be in the top sales guy in his field, not having a job, basically, since he played pro football. He's been fumbling, bumbling around, no career since the 90s. And all of a sudden, he's the top sales guy. Why? Because these spirits will give you money. They'll give you money. Just let them on into their, they'll get them on into the mind. Let them on into the mind. And they'll give you something, but it's going to cost you something. And now he doesn't talk about God. He, he's got all these self-help programs. He's drawn to self-help type preachers. A hardcore preacher 
You know, Joel Osteen's dad was one of the hardest core preachers in America, in the history of America. Did you know that? He was hardcore. His name was John. And this guy was so hardcore that he didn't think his son had it, so he never trained his son to be a preacher. He said, son, you're going to run the audiovisual. And Joe was a cameraman. <laughs> he dies, and somebody said, we think you should be the pastor. He wasn't trained. He wasn't trained. He wasn't trained in the Holy Ghost. He seems to be a good guy. He, I don't think he's got side chicks. I doubt he's doing much than stitching up his face and Botox on his forehead and little hair dye on that little red head of his. I mean, there, there's no problem in sin with that. I bet the guy's life is not riddled with sin. I bet he's got a pretty good heart. But the reality is you, are, you have to teach people the hardcore truth of the Bible. You have to teach them the wages of sin is death. There are spiritual laws. God will not make you do anything. Man has free will. Spiritual law, he won't make you do one thing in your life. Satan works with slaves. God works with free will participants. Another one is you reap what you sow. I met a brother Tuesday, man of God, been saved for a while, and he got into a heated argument. And when you're heated, you say things you don't want to say. I do them. Man, there's one thing you can't say to my wife. It's going to wreck your life. I mean, one thing I've learned in being married for 30 years is keep yourself happy. Keep her happy. Your, your love life goes just fine. There's, there's a schedule. There's a, there's a give and take to it, and it runs smooth to perfection. Don't say insulting things. And the one insulting thing, the one that gets me in the doghouse, is saying my wife is fat. But what happens? Now, I got married when I was 19. Don't judge me, man. I'm 53 years old. I'm no rookie. This ain't my third marriage. This is my only marriage. So I grew up as a little knucklehead kid. And when I get mad, I'd say that word. And I would know right when it came out of my mouth, there'll be no love life for you for at least a week and most likely two. You just messed yourself up with that word. You inflicted pain on yourself. But what happens when I'm mad at them thing, it's came out before. Now, I ain't said it in a long time because I'm getting smarter in my old age. This gray hair ain't for nothing. I paid a price training myself. Uh, but it had happened before. Well, this guy, he makes the mistake of saying, wasn't even thinking it. Well, if this is the way it's going to get down and this is the fight, well, then I'll just move out of the house and get my own place. You reap what you sow. That thing came back. That thing was spoke. It says, what is spoken in the inner courts will be proclaimed on the rooftops. Some demon took that and tried to make that his reality. Tried to make that reality with something he didn't even want to say. I don't know, it took a few months or something before it came back, and now it was an actual debate? No, 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 no. God hates divorce, so as men of God, we got to fight for our marriages and, it, it, and it, hey, it always falls on us because what? We're the spiritual priests of the household. God gave us the responsibility to be the providers. He called us to be the ambassadors, the one that would hear from God and lead his family. We're not above anybody. Kids aren't below their mother, but there's an order. The father, the wife, and the kids, there has to be an order. Well, then if it's out of order, it always falls on us. And the devil knows how to sidetrack us. He'll try to sidetrack you in anger. He'll try to sidetrack you in a distressed time financially he will try to take advantage of you of a time when you've been betrayed and someone's offering something to you to fill that void he is so masterful to get you to think something you shouldn't think to say something you shouldn't say to want to do something you know you should never do and so look we got to cleanse ourselves the bible says we got to cleanse ourselves i'll show you how this thing works biblically and this is how it should be done in the church on a regular basis. So Jesus cleanses the temple. He makes a whip of cords and he drives them out. That tells you it's a fight. Uh, devil, if you're in there, leave. No, Jesus takes out 20,000 people, most theologians believe at that time. He makes a whip of cords. That's like some guy coming down with a bull whip and driving out America West Arena when they're having a son's game. I mean, he was moving with power, and he was moving with precision, and he was moving with authority, and he, and he drove it all out. So he's intentional, 
And he's mad because what? His house is to be called a house of prayer. If you're going to be established as a born-again believer, it's communication with a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to be able to talk to Jesus. You need to be able to ask Jesus. You need to be able to hear back from Jesus, which is his word. I and my word are one of the same. You hear his word. It's living and it's active. So he wants to make you a house of merchandise. Worried about your 401k, worried about your retirement, worried about your investments, your diversified portfolio, worrying about your three vacations a year because you got to keep up with the other boys at the office. So you can't just vacation a couple times a year. You got to be able to get loose and enjoy life and spend money. So he gets you wrapped up with money. He gets you wrapped up with debt. And once you're wrapped up in debt, the Bible says you are a slave and the one, a slave, uh, uh, is one to the, the, the borrower to the lender. You become a slave. You become indebted. Hey, I, I had a house at one point, and man, that thing was a burden. I said, oh my goodness, man, I, I don't want to just keep living for this, this much money to keep this house going. Man, I'm selling this thing. My mind woke up. I, I said, I'm not interested in pats on the back. I'm not interested in making myself feel good because I got an electric seven-foot gate when I roll into my property in my circular driveway if I chose not to drive in on the side and come into my three-car garage. No, I'm not, I don't care about those things anymore. I do not want a burden. I want peace in my house. And I live in, air, I live in AZ, so I want a nice air conditioner. Uh, there's some, you know, there's some things you can ask for. God's a good God, a giving God. That, that's not greedy. And so I always get good air conditioners. I don't like broke down air conditioners, rattling air conditioners. I get one more crank. Cool that place down to 72. So I didn't want the debt. Why? I know people that got two cars. Their car payments are a thousand apiece. I said the mortgage I wanted out wasn't as much as that. That's just for your cars. And the guy is calling me two days ago going, man, I'm, brother, I'm in such debt. And I said, dude, you got to get out of debt. That's your one goal. You need to get out of this debt. You're too old. You're 53 years old. This economy is contracting right now. It starts just like it always does. It starts with the mortgage lenders. They're not writing no loans. It starts with the contractors that are working with the small builders, and it's retracting because they don't have as good as offers. They can't build as cheap as the mega corporate uh, builders, the big Fortune 500 company builders. And so it's, they're retracting right now. Therefore, a lot of work is beginning to dry up, and 70% of every job in Arizona, in Maricopa County, is directly related to housing in some way, shape, or fashion. So when the housing goes down, 70% of Arizona retracts with it. And so uh, you got one goal to get out of debt. You can't be a slave to money. You can't do it. You can't, you, you, he wants you to be, once you're doing that, you don't have time to help nobody. You got to have two jobs. You got to do all these things. Your mind's always got to be spinning how to make more money. But the Bible says he who wins souls is wise. You learn to seek first the kingdom of God. Everything you need will be added behind you. We're supposed to work. The Bible says he who used to steal should steal no longer, but he should work with his hands that he would do something useful and that he would have something to give to those who have a need. So you got to drive him out and you got to get him all out of there. All the corruption. There was three levels. They were doing business. They were doing corrupt money exchange. They were skimming off the top with that. They were selling dirt, doves and goats and sheep, and, and he had to drive it all out. You, 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 he's showing you there's different things inside you. There's not just one thing. It's multifaceted when the devil sets up that infrastructure inside the temple of God, and you need to be able to have some discernment to be able to get it all out in this process. So I want to show you biblically that Christians can have demons. The Bible says, the, or people say, the Bible doesn't say Christians can have demons. Yes, it does. Do you know that? I'll show you it. I'll show you it right here. And, it, and it's out of the book of Acts. So Philip, he's a former table waiter. He met the qualifications for the basic, most simple New Testament ministry. You, you got to have a pre-qualifications. You got to have a good reputation. That means you do what you're supposed to do, and people like you. You, you learn to keep your mouth shut and not talk too much. And, and so you got a good reputation. Then you got to be full of wisdom 
and you got to be full of the Holy Spirit. And so we have Philip. He met those qualifications, and he had a table waiting uh, ministry, helping the Hebrew women and the Hellenist women get their daily distribution of bread. But now he's an evangelist. And he goes down to Samaria and he preaches Christ to the multitudes with one accord. And they all heeded the things spoken by Philip. They were hearing and seeing the miracles in which he did. And unclean spirits came out with a loud voice. They came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. And they're going through a real revival in Samaria. And it says this, and there was a man named Simon who previously practice sorcery in the city. So he doesn't do it anymore. It says they all heeded the word which Philip spoke in one accord, the whole city. He was with them. And they all, he claimed at one point that he was somebody great. And they all gave heed to him from the least to the greatest. They thought this man was the great power of God because he astonished them for, for a long time with his sorceries. Oh, now you're working for the devil doing demonic miracles you got a little deeper infrastructure, hello, than, than a guy who smoked a little pot and watched a little porn. You're a sorcerer. You've got bigger demons because you served them, and they work through you with power. So here's what happens. So he used to astonish them with his fake miracles, his demonic miracles. And it says, then they believed Philip at his preaching, and both men and women were both baptized. And Simon also believed. He believes and it says he was baptized. And he continued with Philip, and he was amazed seeing the miracles. So he believes, he repents first, he believes, he's baptized, and he's following the disciple. The Bible just says he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So he meets way over the qualifications of being saved. But here's what happens. And it says this in... Uh, Verse 16, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip that. So it says this, when the apostles, in verse 14, he says, when they heard at Jerusalem that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to him. So when they had came down, they prayed for him that they might receive the Holy Spirit. So, hello, are you listening to me? People who say the Holy Spirit isn't separate sometimes. Cornelius hears the word of God from, from Peter and the Holy Spirit comes down at one shot. They get filled with the Holy Ghost. They get saved at the same time. They immediately go out and they're water baptized. But in this case, they're already believing. They're already born again, but the Holy Spirit hadn't yet fallen on them yet. So they call for a couple more disciples for backup. And when they come down, they're laying hands on them. They're receiving it. And Simon's demons manifested in him. They didn't want him having nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. So they blocked the mission. They abort the mission, and they put a thought in his head, and he says this. He said, hey, I'll give you money, and when I give you money, anyone who I lay my hands on with this power, that they would receive the Holy Spirit. And Peter says, your money perished with you because you thought you could... You thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You will neither have part nor portion in this matter. For what? His heart wasn't right. Ezekiel 36, 26 says, I'll take away the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Most people thought that was instantaneous, but that's piece by piece. As you give, he'll take it. But that's free will. They got it confused because he says, I'll put a right spirit within you. And that comes instantaneously. The right spirit that can receive the promises of God. And so... He said, your heart's not right with God. He said, repent of your wickedness. You got wickedness in your heart. And he says, and he said, pray to God, perhaps that the thought of your heart would be forgiven you, for you are poisoned with bitterness and you are bound with iniquity. He tells him right here, you're bound with iniquity. You got chains. How could you be bound Unless demons had bound you. Jesus breaks the chains and the yokes. He's got, he's got chains on him. And he's filled with bitterness. Bitter people, they get triggered. Somebody hurt you. Somebody rejected you. Somebody violated you. Somebody ripped you off. And all that pain's in there. So all the devil does is strike that. And then it triggers and it's, it's fresh. 
and the person is angry at other people. He's disappointed. He's depression. He has depression about certain things. So he's saying, look, you're bound with iniquity and you're poisoned with bitterness. It's bit you. The devil's always symbolic of a snake and a scorpion and he left his poison. When the devil strikes you, he wants to leave you with that poison of being bitterness towards some husband that left you, some girlfriend that dumped you for another man, some father that smacked you around when he was drunk. He wants to inflict you with that poison so that you will be bitter and then you will be bound and you won't be able to be free and that devil will manifest in you and he will block the Holy Spirit. There's pre-qualifications to receiving the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14, he says, if you love me, you can't love God unless he first loved you. It'd be impossible. He says, then you will obey me. So through your obedience, he said, then I will send the Holy Spirit to you to receive the power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But if you don't love God back, the Holy Spirit passes you by. The disciples had seen Jesus raised from the dead. Thomas put his fingers in his nail-scarred hands. They believed in Jesus. They were singing and praising God continually in the temple so being happy and being joyful and knowing Jesus doesn't mean you have the Holy Spirit, according to the Scripture. It's not till Acts chapter 2 when he comes in like a mighty rushing wind and they receive power and what remained on them were like tongues of fire and they're speaking and glorifying God in foreign languages. And then Peter rises up who denied Jesus three times before the rooster crowed and he leads 5,000 men to Jesus Christ in one sermon. I don't know, somebody should have said amen to that one. <laughs> I'm, re I'm, I'm not making this up. I'm reading the glorious good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what the power of the Holy Spirit does. He takes a nobody and he makes him somebody. He takes somebody that used to be broken and now he makes him a strong pillar in the church of God. He gets somebody that, that wasn't persuasive and had no insight how to win souls, no strategy, and he begins to give it to him. And the person becomes a strategic soul winner. So we got to get the Holy Ghost. We got to rest in his power, but he comes upon those who love him, upon those who will fight back, upon those who won't sell out their birthright for a morsel of bread. So, hey, there you go. Simon the sorcerer, he, he meets five qualifications. He quits practicing sorcery. He heeds the word. So he stops and pays close attention. Then he believes the word. Then he's baptized for the remission of your sins. Then he keeps following the disciples. You're telling me that guy ain't saved? Then it says, hey, if they would have remained of us, then they were of us. But since they went out from among us, then they were never of us. That verse does not apply to him because he's crying out in repentance. And he says, hey, Pray to God for me that these things in which you've spoken won't come upon me. So they, he knows they know God. And he wants them to go before him that this prophecy, his, his, his mess up, his, his spiritual issue doesn't cost him to ever touching of the Holy Spirit. Now he's not going to be selling it like he was selling those demonic miracles. And he's going to have to sit back and he's going to have to go through some deliverance. He said there was a chance there and he's petitioning for that chance to happen and they would intercede for him. <laughs> That's not someone who just went away like, oh, man, I was caught. When the slave girl is following around Paul, so her master's most likely sent her in there to be around Paul. They're like, hey, we've been, we've been doing all kinds of lying and wonders, and we've been fortune-telling, and we got all these women following us because women are the ones that go to fortune-tellers. I ain't never met a dude go to one. And so they're getting all the women infected with familiar spirits, and now Paul's coming down and he's preaching and he's moving in signs and wonders and miracles. So the slave owners under demonic under, you know, revelation saying, hey, get, get around this guy. He's not going to be for, here, for here forever. He's in a revival mode here. And then he's going to head on back to wherever he's from. And so she keeps going around for a few days saying these men represent God. These men are telling the true way of the power of God. And they keep doing it. So Paul, it says at one point he gets greatly annoyed. So he doesn't know, like, hey, if I do this, they're going to be pissed, and I'm going to get beat down with rods and thrown in prison. I don't know if he knows that. I don't know if he finally comes to the revelation. But at one point, it says he's greatly annoyed, and it says he begins to rebuke those demons and cast them out of that girl. And it says they came out that very hour. I mean, this thing's moving around, hissing. I guarantee you this was a sight. 
It's cussing at him, and he's rebuking. It said it took an hour to get them demons out. And so when those masters show up, and now this whole plot is foiled, now this little slave girl sitting there in the right mind like the demoniac that used to break chains and terrorize people and live in tombs, she's sitting in the right mind, probably playing with a couple of daisies or something. She don't got that witchcraft mode. They're like, oh, hope for money's over. The demons are all gone in her. And they get pissed. They throw him into prison. They start beating him down with rods. That's not what Simon the sorcerer was doing. That was completely a demon that was trying to attach itself to the word of God. So when the man of God left town, she'd start intermingling. Yeah, he left me some information too. Hey, you know what? Come on and sit down at my table and I'll tell you the information he left me. You might not have heard it. It was in the evening time. So that, that, that misleading spirit was going to keep into operation. So Paul wasn't going to put up with it. And he was willing to take what it took. He got another beat down with rods. He was probably used to it. He had been whipped 40 lashes minus one numerous times. He had been in prison and beaten numerous times. He was stoned once, drug out to the city and left for dead till the disciples rallied around him and he rose up. He said, I can't leave this demon in this girl like this wrecking this group of people. So that's not what Simon the sorcerer was. Simon the sorcerer was infected for demons that got deep in there. And they made a move to block him from the Holy Ghost. So you need to understand whatever level of sin you were in. Hey, if you were a pimp, you're going to have a, a lot harder fight getting your demons out than somebody that had three lovers. Let's not be stupid here. It's all sexual sin, but one worked under manipulation and deceit and pressure, and one worked under complete demonic power because there's never been a hooker that didn't have demons, period. Back me, write that one down. And so there's people that bumped in having casual sex that just weren't completely riddled with demons. We got a sin nature. There's levels. And when you're working, oppressing the poor, you're oppressing someone, and you're doing demonic things for financial gain, oh, that's exactly how the demons get in, through commerce, through making your temple all about merchandise, all about money. That's how they got in the house of God. That's how they get in human bodies, period. And so you need to take an adequate look at yourself. You're depressed now, and you say, well, Jesus forgave me. I used to do tarot cards and witchcraft, and I, and I, and I used to light the incense, and I used to do all these, om, and I did yoga, and I was just trying to get in shape. Uh, and now you're depressed four years later. You better put two and two together. He laid back. He laid back, and now he's on the full court press to take your mind because you let him in. He didn't want you to know that you let him in, so he laid dormant for a few years. So you wouldn't be able to correlate the two because you don't have much discernment because he blocks you to anything spiritually. The spiritual things are spiritually discerned, and so now he's rising up to attack you. You need to do an adequate look. You used to be a drunkard. You used to beat your wife. You used to yell at your kids. You used to beat your kids in anger. And now you're wondering why you're financially broke and no one loves you and no one wants to hear from you. You have reaped what you've sown. Tonight you need to cry out for God so that he would give you mercy and so you could get help in your time of need and you could get another chance. Some people you can't get another chance with, but you can get another chance with somebody to love you and to respect you and, and vice versa. Sometimes you can get back into relationships. Sometimes it takes years. You're sick in your body, and you were lining up like all these other goats and sheep down at Veterans Memorial Coliseum or wherever they were with these big pharmaceutical giants ramming people. You went down there, you better repent. You, you went around and you played around. At the end days, the Bible says he's going to lead the whole world astray with sorceries. Sorceries are drugs. Oh, no, you know, I got these from the doctor. Opioids came from the doctor. Opioids and regular pharmaceutical drugs is the third leading cause of death in America. Regular prescribed drugs from the doctor. Hello! They don't even want to cure you. They just want to patch your symptoms. And they, have you listened to that garbage? Do you have herpes? Well, you can take Valtrex. But if you get suicidal, depressed, you think about killing people. You think about, you start getting a rash on your rear end. You start getting rashes behind your ears. You start vomiting blood. Please contact your physician. Are you kidding? You'd be better off sticking out the herpes. I mean, people don't listen. 
And then they got an exemption. This thing, you don't understand. America's on its last leg now. It's almost over. Do you know international law, when someone's fleeing oppression, fleeing persecution, that international law says you have to go to the neighboring country? It doesn't say, come to America. They're, the Mexicans don't come here no more. They already been here. They already went back. All the ones that used to work for me said, man, I ain't living here. I'm going back. I already bought me a plot by the ocean, man. I'm going to be chill. You think I'm going to pay $3 for a, hot, for, a, for a taco? Man, they're 50 cents where I'm from. I ain't living here. This is people from all over the world, and it cost money. And now the world is saying, we don't like your money because we are not afraid of your military industrial complex anymore. We say, saw the way you left Iraq. We saw the way you left Afghanistan. We've been buying all your debt and you ain't coming through. And now your, your AAA rating has fallen. Now you're facing this debt ceiling. Now all these people are coming and it's playing on all these people who don't know his heartstrings. We need to help them. Of course we do. You got to help them over there. You got to help them with water. You got to help them with food. You got to help them with education. You can do that anywhere in the world. I got a buddy, just a regular old dude, got filled with the Holy Ghost and bought over 100 wells around the world. And he puts them in front of churches. So the churches got the first crack of preaching to everybody in the villages because they got the fresh water. Now they got fresh water, they got agriculture. Oh, now they got the church is a bigger building. Now the church is a school. Oh, now the church has food for the little kids. So you might not like Jesus, but your little kids like Jesus because Jesus got a whole lot more love than your house and Jesus got food. Yeah, you're not hearing me. You got a job to do and God will do something miraculous in your life, supernatural in your life, but it's going to cost you your old life. It's going to cost you your old life. Lay it down. Lay down your old life. Tell him I give it to you, Lord. I came and I wanted you to save my soul. I didn't understand the full gospel. Please forgive me, Lord. I, I came one foot in. I came two foot in and one hand holding on to my old hopes and dreams in case you didn't come through. I was double-minded. I was set up for failure. You were going to have to teach me, and I've learned the hard way that it's your way or no way. I can't do it partially. You got to be real. You got to apologize for all these sins. You can't just gloss over them. Sin hurts God. I remember I didn't really understand that till I had already been saved for a long time. I thought, man, God's big. You know, when I'm big and I get some small dude messing around on the job site, if you're an underling, a, a, a grunt, you know, sweeping up the place and he does something, nuts, you know, stupid, I don't take any offense to that guy. You know, he, he's just trying to learn. He's been, he's been doing nothing for a while. He's trying to learn how to, I don't mind, he stole something, that's... I thought, well, God, God's so big and I'm so small. You're saying my sin hurts you? That's what the Bible says. The Lord has feelings. And he cares about his children. And he cares about the way his children love him back. He has emotions. And when he was making man, he wasn't just giving you this great opportunity, which he was. He was creating for himself a family. And then when he does everything by shedding his blood and sending his son and raising from the dead is a guarantee one day you'll rise. That's the guarantee. You got life and life eternal. He leaves you his word. These are guarantees. He said these things I've written that you would know that you have eternal life. And then we, we don't live for him. And we don't love him. And we don't worship him. And we get caught up with demons because we want it. And somebody told us that this was okay. And we didn't look in the scriptures to double check it. That hurts God. So thank the Lord that there's a way to be forgiven. And that's by asking him. And that's by understanding that when you truly turn your back on sin, he says, I'll put it as far as the east to the west. 
It's, it's done away with. You, you, you can't bring it back. I'm not going to bring it back to you. I'm not going to count it against you. I'm not going to hold back your future because what you used to do, it's going to be dealt with and it's going to be done with. I sent my son to deal with it. But it's going to take you to truly let it go. And it's going to take you to tell those demons, hey, I'm done. You've been working me with this sin too long. You've been bringing it back over and over again. I, I, I'm severing my ties with demons. I tried to let that go, and the demons kept bringing it back to me. A different face, a different season, a different type of it, but it was always coming back. That's what deliverance is, saying I'm not going back, and I'm not going to allow any demons to sneak up on me and to bring that back into my life. I'll show you how to do it. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're just coming as we are. We thank you that we're your children. We are your sons and daughters. That we can approach you boldly in our time of need. We don't have to come with fear. We don't have to come with uncertainty. You said that we could come confidently to the throne of grace. And that we could find help in our time of need. Tonight, we're looking for some help, Lord. Lord, we're looking back and we're remembering the call. We're looking to the days of salvation when we first believed and how joyful we were and how expectant and hopeful we were and how loving people was not a burden. It was a joy. Even though it wasn't always received well, the things we were preaching, our optimism kept us going for another one. And we saw good fruits because we kept at it. Lord Jesus, I know there's a lot of my brothers and sisters who've lost their joy of being a servant. They've lost their hope in a guarantee of eternal life through Christ Jesus. They've lost their hope that they're still eligible to receive the power of the Holy Spirit and to move in signs, wonders, and miracles to bring you glory. Well, tonight, Lord, we just say we're sorry. We're sorry for losing what you were doing and retracting and going backwards. We're asking you to forgive us, Lord, we're so grateful for another chance, Lord. We say it's not over because you said it's not over. That if we're still living, that means we're eligible for grace and mercy. And so, Lord, we're asking you for grace and mercy, Lord, to help us. I don't want to give up on you, Lord. I don't want to give up on myself. I don't want to give up on the call. I've just ran weary and dry. I've ran into a season of confusion. And I want you to help me in my mind. I want you to restore me in my inner man, Lord Jesus. Thank you for helping me right now, Lord. Thank you for forgiving me, Lord. I'm opening my heart, Lord. I'm looking at the things I've been saying. I've even cussed you out, Lord. So I'm so sorry for cussing you out, Lord. I've, I've cussed out my wife and my husband. I've cussed out my children. I, I almost lost my job because of my anger. Oh, I know that... That job pays the bills, Lord. I'm grateful for that job. I'm so sorry I jeopardized it by drinking and not showing up. I'm so sorry by logging on to pornography at work that would get me instantly fired. I've been playing with the gifts in which you've given me, allowing sins to infiltrate my own home. Please forgive me, Lord Jesus. Have mercy on me. You're the one that can wash the sins into the sea of forgetfulness. You're the one that can renew my mind that I would hate what you hate. You hate sin. To be able to hate what I used to find joy and pleasure in can only be happening and happen through the Holy Spirit. I'm inviting you, Holy Spirit, to change my mind. Change my expectations on the future. I know this world is, is perishing. It's very evident, but it's not over yet. It's not over for people like Eric that got saved, that got those, had the spirit of death. It's not over like the man that was gonna get, is going to get saved soon at the gym. It's not over for those people we're supposed to be meeting and loving. So, Lord Jesus, I forgive myself. I'm sorry of cursing myself. I'm sorry of excluding myself from your promises. Tonight, I forgive myself. And what I have written, Fully receive, I'm giving it away. I forgive those people who hurt me when I was a child, who made me feel rejected, who made me feel less than, who abused me mentally and emotionally, physically. I forgive them right now in the name of Jesus. I forgive the people that accused me falsely and lied falsely against me and caused me pain and suffering. I forgive them, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
My battle is with the spirit world and demons. It is not with any man. And so I forgive men of their trespasses, just as you forgave me of my trespasses. Thank you for removing this pain in my soul towards my family and my father and my mother, my brothers and my aunts and uncles. I forgive them and I bless them in Jesus' name. I forgive ministers that let me down. I forgive ministers that didn't bring the hardcore word of truth and help me when I was ready. I forgive them all in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for mercy. We love you, Lord. Amen. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's going to be delivered tonight. Thank you for giving them a spirit of boldness and courage to come forward to get free. If that's you, just line up between this carpet and that black mat. The ministry team's all here. We prayed for tonight so we would be ready to help you. We're going to take the authority that God gave us over the spirit world. We're going to use it so that you can walk out of here a different person. When I got delivered 13 years ago, I walked out so light, I couldn't believe it. I walked in with a bad attitude, and I left with a great attitude. Thank you for the spirit of boldness. Thank you that people are fighting through to get what you told them they could have, Lord. Thank you for it. YouTubers, just go ahead and fight on through. This is you. This spectator's over. That was the message. Now it's participation. Satan, we bind your power in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind the oppressor in the name of Jesus Christ. You have oppressed the children of God in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I bind the oppressor. I bind the oppressor in the name of Jesus. I bind that devil who has oppressed these people for years. I bind this oppressor. I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. You're going to come out. Come out of there. All that pain in the soul from your childhood. Come out of your soul. Come out of the soul right now. Come out of there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I bind this oppressor right now. Come out. You've been oppressing these women. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Come out of the mind right now. Come out of there. I command the oppressor to come out right now. You've been stealing the joy. You've been stealing the joy for years, you filthy devil. Come out. Come out. Come out. You lied and said they weren't worthy. You lied and said they weren't good enough. You lied and said they'd never make it. You're a liar. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. He's going. There he goes. Go. Go. Keep fighting him. Go. Keep fighting him. Take a big breath, sister. Go. Keep going. That's them. Go in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Depression from 14 years old. Come out right now. You're trying to come back. I command you to come out right now. Depression from the failures. Come out right now. Depression. Always thinking negative. Even though when she wants to worship God, you instantly start coming with negativity right after the song. I know who you are and I command you to come out of there. Come out of there, you negative spirit. I command you to come out. You've been chipping away at her joy for years. I command you to come out right now. Come out of there. Come out. I command you to let the people of God go. I command you by the authority of Jesus Christ. You're a liar. I break generational curses. I break anxieties and fears. I break loneliness and depression. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out. Fear. Come out, fear. Fear. Come out. Come out. Fear. Come out of there. Fear. Come out. Come out. Two big coughs. He'll go. That's fear. Kundalini and fear. Come out right now. False Holy Spirit of guilt. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. There you go. Drive him out. Go. Come up and out. Trust me. Come out. Go. Go. Fear. Come out of there right now. Fear. Go. Drive him. Drive him. Drive him. There you go. He's going. Fear. Come out right now. Fear about financial depression. Come out. Weed. Keep going. You got him. Keep going. Go. Keep coming out of there. Depression. Suicidal thoughts. Come out of there. Go. Go, you liar. Come out of there right now. Take those poisons of fighting. Take those poisons from fighting and arguing. Feeling he couldn't get anything unless he scratched for it, unless he kicked for it. You're a liar. The Lord provides all of his needs according to his glorious riches which are in heaven. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. All your sickness. Come out of there. Take a big breath. Go. Fight him. Go. Come out of there. Go. 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 Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I bind all spirits. All spirits is sickness and disease and infirmity. I command you by the authority of Jesus Christ to let the man go. Come out of there right now. All that self-sufficiency. I command you to come out right now. The only way is through Jesus, the Son of God. You're the way maker, Lord. You're the miracle working God. Tonight we need a miracle. We need hope restored. We need joy restored. We need dreams restored. We need health restored in Jesus' name. Take a big breath. I bind anxieties and fears. Come out, uncertainties. Come out of there right now. Fears that it's too late. Fears that it's passed by and it's over. You're a liar. I command you to come out now. I command you to come out. Come out. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there, choker. Come out of there, choker. Come out of there, choker. I command chokers, choking the love of God, choking out the blessings, choking out the healing. Come out of their anger. Come out of their anger. I command you to take your toxins and bitterness. We forgive those people. We forgive those people in war. We forgive those people. Our battle is not with people. It's against the demons. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. All that anger. Come out of there right now. All that fighting. Fighting relatives. Fighting friends. Fighting business partners. I command you to come out right now. Come out of there. I want you out of me now. I want you out of me now. I'm not going to get sick and die. I shall fulfill my call in my days. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. All the rip-offs. Come out. All the rip-offs from ministers that ripped him off. Come out right now. They didn't do what they were supposed to do with those offerings and tithes. Come out right now. We forgive them of squandering the money and spending it on themselves. Come out right now. We forgive them. I break the soul ties with ungodly ministers. I break the soul ties that came in. Come out when he learned they weren't into the loving people. They were into loving themselves. We forgive them right now in Jesus' name. Keep going. Fight him hard. You know how to fight. You were in the military. Fight him. Fight him. I want you out. Come out. I bind every spirit that told him it was over. I bind every spirit that told him that the gift wasn't given to him. I bind that devil that told him the gift was earned. That's a lie in the name of Jesus. I bind all this fighting and quarreling in his mind. You brought the fight to his mind. You wanted to block all his blessings and his, his, his promises. Come out. I command you to come out. Come out of there right now. I command you to go. Go. The drinking and the partying. Come out. Come out all the music curses. Come out of there right now. Take your poison out of his brain. Go. 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 Come out. All the music curses. R&B. Rap. Hip hop. Rock and roll curses. Nightclub curses. The drinking and the alcohol. The carousing. Come out of there. Keep going. Keep going. Drive them out. You got the power. You got the authority. Come out of my bones. Come out of my back. Messing with my body. Making me feel tired. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. What do you think you need to be delivered from? What's the first thing that came to your mind? Hmm? What, is, what kind of generational curse? She was in the alcohol? Oh, were you ever in it? Nothing? What's your first name? Heavenly Father, I got Sister Jenny here, Lord, and I thank you that you're the God of second chances. You're the God of new beginnings. And so, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you became a curse by hanging on the tree that we would be able to go free. So, Lord, we repent on the behalf of our forefathers and preceding generations. We repent of any of the occult involvement of Grandma in Jesus' name, any of the complacency or the Ahab spirit on Grandpa to let it all go down. 
Lord, we repent of any of this atheism spirit that was moving around, telling them we can live any way we live and do what we want and it doesn't matter. We repent of those years that were wasted by the enemy. And I thank you for breaking this curse. This curse is still trying to tell her she's not enough to save, get people saved. She's not enough to lay hands on a sick body and see it recovered. It's telling her she's not enough to cast out devils and I declare you're a liar. And I command grandma's demons to be broken. I command these generational curses to be broken of not good enough uh, and always blocking every prosperity and I command you to come out right now come out of that belly right now come out of there come out of there right now Just take come out come out of there come out of there come out fight him I don't want this witchcraft I don't want fake holy spirits I don't want this garbage this toxins fight him come out of me now come out of me now you're lying. Let my mind go. Fight him. Let my mind go. Come out of my mind. Come out of my mind. Come out of my body. I'm turning on you in Jesus' name. Thank you for another day. Thank you for another level of freedom in his mind. Another level of clarity to get his blessings back, to get his marriage back, to get his family back, to see his kids saved. Oh, thank you, Lord. Satan, you're bound. Come on out of there. Come on out of there. Come on out of there. In the name of Jesus, you're lying to him. Every spirit of mental confusion, every spirit that's attacked this mind, I bind your power. Mind manipulation, negative thought disorder, loneliness, depression, anxieties, and fears. I bind your power and I command you to let the brain go. Let his mind go. I command you to come out of the cerebral cortex and the memory cortex. I command you to come out of every area of this brain in Jesus' name. You are loose, devil. You are loosed and undamned. Then I drive you out now. He came to the altar of God for the freedom of God. Take a big breath. Go. Go. Them devils whispering that I'm a loser. That devil whispering that I'm not getting my full deliverance. You're a liar. I command you to come out. I command you to come out. Giving me this anxiety. You come out now. Come out of there. Come out of my mind and body. Come out of my mind. Come out of my mind. God gives power, love, and a sound mind. Come out of there right now. Take your restlessness and hopelessness and anxieties and go. Go. Two more big breaths. Go. He's going. Go. Come out of there. Take your poisons and go. Take your poisons and go. Take your poisons and go. Take the poisons of bitterness and go. Take the poisons of bitterness and go. Take the evil and go. Take the rebellion of God and go. You're trying to get him to rebel against God. Kundalini, come out of there now. Kundalini from churches. Come out of there right now, you infiltrating new age. Come out of there right now. New age demons. Come out right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come out. Broken heart. Come out right now. Jesus came to mend the broken heart. I command the broken heart spirit to leave this woman. Come out. You trampled over her heart. Come out of there right now. Go. I command your terror to go. I command your torment to stop. Go. Go. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Go. Come out. Come out being abused. Come out being abused verbally. Being abused mentally. Being abused financially. Being even manipulated from church members. Come out of there right now. Being abused, abusing others. I call the spirit of abuse out now. Go. Came in through his childhood. They told him that's how his life was going to be. Come out of there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Spirit power. You said we shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. The power to heal. Lord, I pray the healing power would come to her right now. Healing her immune system. Healing her, her muscles, Lord. Giving her appetite back. Giving her vitality back. Lord Jesus, she needs a healing. She needs restoration. She needs strength for the Holy Spirit to see and discern and to fight back. We receive you, Lord. We receive you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, you pray in tongues, sir? This says the Holy Spirit will pray prayers and requests unknown to our natural mind but known to God I'll be right back
My friend, let me give you this. That's your homework assignment. I give you one for your friend too. Thank you. These, these will help you. They're going to help people Thank get you. delivered. Thank Lord, I pray healing. That your presence is here for Jeremiah's body, his body to grow, his body to get strong, his need to recover in Jesus' name, his hope to return, his faith to return. Lord, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit for him to begin this ministry, to begin to be a leader by example, to be a leader that the hand of God is upon him, that they would see as God is with him. Thank you for this anointing. Any spirit in there, we bind you, and it will come out in this alley as he goes home in Jesus' name. The one you said I had, he's attacking me. They came to my my mother's wound. There was a girl that molested me when I was a little girl. And Here's what we do with this. Oh. You be you you don't have these spirits. You don't have? No, he's telling you you have them. You're going through deliverance. You're being free. You're not to own nothing. He's trespassing on you. You're born again. You're filled with the Holy have, Spirit. No, it's, it's spirits that are trying to test you. And if they make you think they're in there, then they're back in there. It's a door. He's just trying to come upon you to test you. You're getting delivered. That means he's getting on the outside. He makes a touch, and he's saying, I'm in here. And you go, oh, no, he's in here because he touched me. Stop owning him. Yes. As a man thinks, so is he. He's making you think you're sick. He's making you think you're not getting delivered. He's making you think you're not getting better. And then I, I went to bed, I worship until midnight, and I went to bed, I lie down, and then I was seeing this demon, the, a, a principal coming, he was walking in the air, he was tall. Did you tell him to face. leave? Did His you tell him to leave? Me. I fell asleep. I, I didn't know well, how'd him. you see him if you were I mean, asleep? Because he, when he came in, he touched me, and I jumped in my bed. Well, don't I, get scared. You know, you, he's trying to test he, you. He to you tell him I'm not scared me. of you. You tell him you're not scared. Yes. You tell him you can't do this. You're trespassing. He walked in your house. You did nothing about it, and you you put up with it. He's terrorizing you. If he's gonna, yeah, he's getting success. He's gonna keep coming back. You need to stop giving him success. You say I don't care what your name is. Get out of this house. No, just now in the bathroom, I went twice to the bathroom when you're preaching. And then when I was in the bathroom, he said, he called me names. Like, well, you I'm tell him, me. I'm not listening to you anymore. You're dialoguing with this spirit. No, He's I, wearing he, you no, down. He, no, he, he called me names. Well, you I, tell him, get I out of here. You. There you go. I'm not listening to you. Don't have dialogue with him. That means you don't, I don't have those demons. No, he's trying to tell you you do. You're getting delivered. When you're getting delivered, he's just getting right back in by making you think he's back in. He's just touching your body. He's trying to scare you. And God's trying to get you to overcome these spirits and to stand in faith and stand in victory and say no and take authority over your body and take authority over your house and take authority over your thoughts. And the devil's getting in when you don't do that. Praise God. Don't allow it. He's, he's, he's trying to, he's like a, he's like a wife beater. A wife beater knocks his, his wife's eye shut and then he says, baby, I love you. Come on, I didn't mean to hit you in your eye. I love you. That's what he's doing to you. He's, he's a, he's a wicked, evil spirit. See, that's exactly right. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. You got to slow everything down and you are under grace. You're not under the law. You're under grace. You tell him, no, I don't let him in my house. God's not a respecter of persons. If I got the authority to keep him out of my house, you got the authority to keep him out of your house. He's just striking you with fear first. If you have fear, then you'll be tormented. There you go. Then use your authority. That's step one. Okay, great. Said, he goes. Don't even talk. You're talking too much to him. You, he doesn't need to know what you're going to do. You're dialoguing with him. Will you kick him out and you do what you do? You don't. He doesn't need to know what you're going to do. Taking communion. You're talking too much to him. 
You're over there. And he, trying to see, get out of me. I'm gonna take him. That's what you say. Stop and out. Stick to those two words. Stop and out. That's all you need to tell him. Because when I was trying to take communion, I started like yawning, trying to throw. I was throwing up, and then I went to the to the sink, and then I said, "Get out of me, Jesus Christ! I command you to leave okay. me now." You got to realize this: you can only have so many spirits. You're not a hardcore witch sinner. You 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 you've been saved for a long time, right? Yeah. You got some generational stuff that's yes. fear, yes. and he's attacking you with fear, and then he's getting in your mind, right? So what you have to do is overcome those things by faith. Not by rebuking things, you overcome those by faith, by believing the word of God. Yes, you're a new creature in Christ, you, yet you serve the God of all hope and the God of all truth. And then you know the truth and the truth sets you free. You got to stand on the basic simple principles of God. And, uh, and don't let him in your mind. Once your things are racing, then he's gaining ground. You cannot allow him to gain ground on you. Okay, let me hit a few more people and I'll talk to you before I go, okay? Uh, sir, what's your deal? I've seen you here before. What's going on? I'm just here to visit and be with the... You've been here before or yeah. no? Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought I recognized you. Yeah, right. yeah. Aaron from San Diego. Oh, okay, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just, uh, I like a little bit of prayer. I think um, there's been a little revival back at Sand Dog. One guy got saved. Now I'm kind of psyched from the eight. They all got born again and baptized in a pool in a condo building. Oh, okay. The last two months have been... It's been awesome we're getting deliverance, but I'm starting to feel that pressure. It's kind of like that burden, you know, when you're pastoring people, you know. Mm. Kind of been you, do you have a job, or do you? this is your job? I have a job. That's why I'm out here. Whenever I come out here, I'm always here to visit work, but I'm remote in San Diego. Oh, okay. But the office is here in Phoenix. Oh, okay. So I'm working on that, and I'm, I'm doing a ministry idea that the Lord gave me. Like, it's just kind of been a lot. It's been busy, but, like, in a good way. And I just feel like um, since it started, it's been great, but I also have this slight feeling of, like, I'm not really getting ready, you know. These guys hit me up every day in the church. It's kind of popping off. It's so organic. It's like every day somebody else would help us. Okay. Well, I know how to pray for you. Lord, I thank you for my brother's... Uh He's growing, but Lord, as Paul understood, he needed disciples, and so he trained up Timothy and Silas, Lord, and he worked with the apostles, and he rose up elders in the church, Lord, that could uh, run the operation when he was gone, and so, Lord, you, you give biblical wisdom how to uh, manage people as we're seeing them grow and prosper, as they're going through their struggles and their difficulties and getting their blessings and going through deliverance. So, Lord, I thank you that we have the mind of Christ. I thank you that we can pray about these things and these things receive answers. Lord, he needs a, a friend to come alongside him. Lord, then there's a, a level, Lord, where it took me a while to put those relationships in certain perspectives. I became good friends with all these people. And uh, we didn't have the uh, organic chemistry of good friends. It was a position of a friend and a brother in Christ and a mentor and a mentee. And I didn't know how to properly set up those relationships and I got entangled myself Lord and and I know that Lord you gave me some strategies and how to see people built up to a certain level before we broke bread and certain levels before they came and had dinner with my family and there was levels of seeing their growth and their faith and their maturity and that wasn't disrespecting them or putting them on the back burner it was just things I needed to see and see them grow Otherwise, things got manipulative when things went bad, and it went destructive. And so, thank you, Lord, that you showed me how to come on out of it, and you showed me how to have patience to be able to hear and to receive those things. So I pray the patience of God would come upon him right now. It's a count it all joy when you face trials of many kinds, because through the counting it joy and going through it, we would receive patience, and patience has a perfect work. I pray for the patience of Jesus Christ to come upon him, the patience and power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for my brother. I thank you for his anointing. I thank you for his gifts. I thank you for his learning, learning your word and being able to share the word, the ability to love people and get his hands and his blessings to people, that you're using him as a body, a member of the body of Christ. Thank you that you've been delivering him in his quiet time and in his fight. Thank you that you're meeting him there. Now he's to the level of personal deliverance. Thank you that the anointing is growing stronger in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What do you need uh, prayer for, sister, before I go?
Oh. Or, uh, how'd you lose your prayer. How'd you lose your joy? What happened? Uh, I think in the last couple of days. Just a couple of days is all. I realized what had happened. Oh, what happened? My thoughts turned into uh, myself not being able to uh, receive the fullness of the Instagram. It's the best I can explain. Oh, okay. What's your first name? Well, Lord, I lift up Sister Barbara, Lord, and Lord, I thank you that you're bringing in to show her some things, Lord, about getting our prayers answered, Lord, about patience, about waiting, about moving forward, about staying busy with the things that we can take care of until those things are answered, until those things come into play. So, Lord, we repent, Lord, of being disheartened and dismayed and discouraged, Lord. And, Lord, the result is she lost some joy. So, Heavenly Father, I'm praying right now that her mind would be free from any spirit of a, that attacked her. The spirit of discouragement, the spirit of despair, the spirit of hopelessness that came in and made her angry and made her quit praying and made her quit believing. Thank you, Jesus. Take a big breath. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming in. I rebuke all those spirits. All those generational spirits, all those spirits when she lived lukewarm, when she lived without Christ, all those spirits that got into this flesh or into this mind, I rebuke you now. You're trying to come up in this later years of her life to attack her joy, her purpose, her patience, and her perseverance. I command you to come out right now. Come out of there, you choker. Come out of there. You're trying to choke out Christ. Come out of there right now. You're trying to choke out prayers and health and blessings. I command you, come out of there right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Depression and hopelessness. Come out of there. Come out. Go. Go. Hey, are you the guy I gave the ride to at the airport at that time? Oh, that's another guy. There's a guy who's a little younger than you. He's married, too. He's from San Diego. Come out of there, you liar. Come out of the woman. Blessings. Keep up the good work. Yeah, I needed that. Thank you. That encouraged me big time. Amen. We'll see you. Come out. I command infirmities. Come out. Infirmity. Sickness. Disease. Come out. Come out. Come out. Keep fighting. You got the anointing. I command you. Lean forward a little. You choker. Come out. I know you're in there. I break witchcraft curses. I break sex magic in the name of Jesus. Magical relationships that ended in despair and fights and depression. I break those curses in Jesus' name. Soul ties with men that promised a future forever. Come out. Promise to be a husband. Promise to make her a wife. I break broken promises and witchcraft. I break sorcery and divination. Come out. I break sorcery and divination. Going to the occult and going to the dark side. I break new age manipulation over the soul. I break new age manipulation over the soul. I break witchcraft over the mind. I break the serpent spirits. Come out. I know there are snakes in this body. I call the snakes off the spine. I call the snakes out of the reproductive organs. Come out. I break the snakes out of the brain. Come out. Come out of there. Snakes and chokers. Come out. Come out of the stomach. Come out of the stomach. You're going to try to send her another man. A man with money, a man with looks, to be a plant that won't be a man of God. He'll be a fake and a lukewarm. Come out right now. Come out. You're going to try to trick her. Come out, you trickster. Trying to trick her from going through deliverance. Trying to trick her from being a disciple. Trying to trick her from being a worshiper of God. Come out, occult spirits. Come out of there. Get off this spine. Get off this spine. All the way down from the sacrum, all the way up to the shoulders. Loose. Loose and uncoil now. Loose and uncoil now. I command witchcraft to loosen and coil. Go, witchcraft in the womb, come out. Witchcraft in the womb and the lower loins, come out. Come out, demons that brought sex magic. Come out right now. Come out of there right now. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out of there right now. I command you to come out of the lower loins and the private parts. I rebuke you. Take your hands off the woman of God. Take your hands off the woman of God. Take your hands off the woman of God. Come out of there. Come all the way out. 
Come all the way out of there right now. Spells come out of the spells come out of the belly. Spells come out of the womb. Death spirits come out of the womb right now. The spirit of death come out of the womb. Come out of the womb. Come out. Come out of the belly. Fight him. You're not going to lie dormant. I charge you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out. Come out. Her value is in her beauty. Come out. Her value is in her body. Come out. Her value is in her... Come out. Her value comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Come out of there, you wicked spirit. Witch spirits. Come out. Witch spirits. I command you to loose. Come out. Come out of there. You're trying to let her get enough Christianity to get her in the church. You come out right now. You've got all that pain and sickness in there. Drive him out. He'll try to turn that into cancer or something. He's vicious. Get that out of there. Ovarian cancer, cervix cancer, breast cancer. Come out. Come out of there. Mystery illnesses and sickness. Come out. Drive him. Drive him. Go. 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 Come out. Casual sex for pleasure. That's over. This is a woman of God. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of there right now. Come out of there. I command witchcraft to come out of there. I command spells and hexes and vexes, voodoo and hoodoo. I command the witchcraft and the warlock spirits to come out. Come out. I command the spirits of darkness to come out. I command the spirit of darkness to leave in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Go. I command you, stop stalling and come out. I bind all these spirits that are in her body in Jesus' name. I separate one from another. I forbid you to aid and abed one another. I forbid you to call others in for strength. Come out. Come out. The stronghold in the mind that are allowing these demons in the body to stay. Come out. Stronghold in the mind that's allowing these demons to stay. Go. Go. Strongholds in the mind. Come out. Strongholds in the mind. Come out. Stronghold in the mind. Come out. Come out. Stronghold in the mind. Come out of there. Fight him. Devils that say we can do this over months and years. Just take your time. No, we charge you in the name of Jesus. We charge you, you poverty curse. We charge you, you poverty spirit. Come out right now. Come out, big dreamer. Come out right now. What is it? Go. Yeah, you there you go. Now you're going. Keep telling him. Keep telling him. Blessings to you. I got to pray for these streamers real fast. Come out. Oh, this guy? Okay, I'll pray for him. Thanks. Lord, I pray for any streamers right now in the name of Jesus that they would receive the blessings. The blessings of the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you when the Holy Spirit comes, you would need no man to teach you, for he will teach you all things. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you come to comfort. I thank you that you come and lead and guide them. I thank you, Lord, that you convict them of sin, that you lead them to repentance. I thank you, Lord, for the covenant of never leaving and never forsaking. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. No spirits are going home. No more fighting. No more worry. No more fear. No more doubt and unbelief. No more running this family over. It's over. I pray blessings on the people of God. The blessings of hope. The blessings of security through Christ Jesus. The blessing of love. Thank you, Lord. He's a blessed man. I pray that he would learn to bless others, that he would learn to bless himself. I thank you, Lord, that he can pray a prayer and walk in that prayer. I thank you that he can worship throughout the time of going through deliverance. I thank you, Lord, that he can hold on to hope, that he can hold on to the soundness of the mind, that he can hold on to faith into things turning around and getting better. I thank you that you're the God of change changing the way his brain thinks, the way his mind thinks, the way he processes information, the way that he activates hope, the way that he recalls scriptures and stands on them. I thank you that he's being equipped as a man of God. Thank you, Lord, that he's a man of God. He's not a victim. He's no longer a victim. He's not mentally ill. Those are demons. Lord, we're fighting you with truth. We're fighting you with faith. We're fighting you with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we command you, let him go. Let him go in Jesus' name. Let him go. Any kundalini from drugs, any kundalini from music, I bind kundalini and I bind the imposters. I bind any transfer spirit from anyone who was sick that laid hands on him and an evil spirit transferred. I bind generational curses. I bind spirits that came in in the neighborhood and regional spirits to attack his mind through horror movies, through violent movies, 
in Jesus' name, I bind the attacker. I root up and tear down all strongholds of the enemies trying to fortify your protection in his brain. I rip it down in the name of Jesus and expose you with the truth of God. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of there. Get him going. Get him going. Get him going. Drive him out. Drive him out. He's already bound. Now drive him out. Drive him out of your brain. Whom the sun sets free is free. He's your deliverer. He's your ever-present help in time of need. He's here. He wouldn't just deliver everyone and not you. That's a lie. Use the anointing. You got it. Use your faith. You have it. Blessings. Hello. Have a good night. See you. God bless you, streamers. It was a good night. Go tell your friends. Go bring your family. You don't have to play church anymore. You can come to the Arizona Deliverance Center where actually people pray and actually pray the Bible and actually believe the Bible. And then the Holy Spirit actually comes down even though the preaching is sometimes suspect. He still comes down after a bad day of preaching. He'll still honor his word and the desires of people who come for a touch from him because he works with imperfect people to show he is the one truly holy God, the self-existent one, the lover of your soul. Come on down. God bless you.